And we are back with Catherine CVA with AARP of North Carolina, Steve Edmonds with Alliance Insurance Services, and Mark Van Arnhem. And he is with the North Carolina Navigator Consortium. And what we're doing is we're answering your Affordable Care Act questions. We're answering your Medicare related questions. We want to make sure that you get the answers that you're really looking for. The number here is 336-379-5775. Instead of thinking that you might know the answer or wondering what the really answer is, make sure you just text it in. All right, so this person is asking, um, I'm on COBRA insurance. Can you sign up for this um, ACA insurance? Mark? Yeah, you, you certainly can. And, and COBRA, uh, ACA insurance is probably going to be a whole lot cheaper than COBRA, uh, depending on your uh, individual uh, income status. But you certainly can. Uh, you should talk to somebody by Sunday or go on healthcare.gov um, or, or call the healthcare.gov number. But there are folks that are we here to help. Uh, now through Sunday, and it will sure, prob I would venture to guess about 95% likely it's going to be a lot cheaper than COBRA. Okay, let's talk about this, and this may be a Catherine and a Steve question. This person says, I don't have Medicare Part B. Am I qualified to sign up for anything extra? So I don't fully understand the question. Um, if you are on Medicare at the time that you went on to Medicare, um, you were had the opportunity to sign up for Part B. If you did not, you can still sign up for it, um, but it will be delayed and you will pay a penalty. And the penalty is steep. And the longer you go without being on Medicare, the bigger the penalty. And it is for the rest of your life. So it's a 10% every year penalty that gets added to your premium. Okay, and what we have up right now so that everybody can see it is something from Medicare.gov, and it says you can defer Part B, but you must sign up when you turn of age and defer Part B or be penalized. So, um, Catherine, you just mentioned about that. Steve, I think a lot of people kind of get uh, confused about that. They're still working when they sign up for Medicare at their age, and they have a work insurance, and they're like, oh, they told me I don't need Part B. But if you don't defer and check that extra little box, then what happens? You're, you're penalized. So, so as Catherine just men mentioned, it's, it's a penalty that you, it's not a one-time penalty. You're, you're penalized for the rest of your life or as long as you're on Medicare. And uh, so that is just not a good uh, thing to do. So always sign up. When you get 65, it's easy. Uh, most people will go ahead and sign up for Part A, even if they're still working. They will defer Part B until the time in the future that they retire and lose their group coverage. Then they can call back in and kick the Part B in at that point in time. No penalty for that. You're good to go. So, you know, take your Part A. If you need to defer Part B, go ahead and do that, and then everything should be good. Okay. All right. We have another income question, um, Mark, because you mentioned something about that. It says, how much income do I need to qualify for the Affordable Care Act? So uh, like Steve said earlier, everybody, anybody can pick up, get a marketplace plan through the ACA. However, in order to get those advanced premium tax credits, which are paid directly each month from the federal government uh, to your insurance provider, um, you need to make uh, about a hundred percent of federal poverty level, which I uh, said earlier was about 13 and some change for an individual, 13,000 and some change, all the way up to 400 was the previous limit. Uh, but after the Inflation Reduction Act was signed, those limits were increased some. So now people at 400, 500 percent of federal poverty level are getting some subsidies to help pay down that premium. Um, and that again goes directly from the federal government to your insurer on a monthly basis. So you pick a plan on the site that it, on the marketplace that is $700 a month, but you qualify for $655 worth of subsidies. Uh, APTCs, you're going to pay a $45 monthly premium. Okay. We're seeing nine out of 10 North Carolinians that have enrolled um, getting financial assistance to help pay for their coverage. And five out of 10 nationwide enrollees are paying premiums of $10 a month or less. Okay, these are good stats to know. Hey, Steve, this person says, I'm planning on retiring early at age 63 in March, and I'm gonna lose my employer insurance. Obviously, they can't go on Medicare yet. So they say, can I still get an ACA plan then? Absolutely, and, and they not only can they get a plan, 
they probably are going to be pleasantly surprised at how affordable the plan will be. Uh, again, as Mark said, it, it's it's all an income thing. You know, you, you have to put the income levels in there. But what I find a lot of times when I'm working with folks 62, 63, 64 years old is their subsidy level is huge because of their age, of course. And they are just pleasantly surprised at how affordable the coverage is a lot of the time. Okay, and because when you have a life-changing event in the middle of the year, you can then go on to the marketplace. So if you lose a job or that kind of thing, you have a baby that is born and you need new coverage or something of that nature, something that can, that can happen.